Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Andy Sterkowitz, and in this video what I'm gonna cover is can you still become a programmer after the age of 30? I have received so many emails and comments here on my YouTube channel asking me, I'm 35, I'm 37, I'm 43, I'm 52, can I still become a programmer? Is this still a field I can get into? And so I've been dying to make a video on this about the topic, right? So I'm gonna answer the question in this video, can you still become a programmer after 30? Now, if you're wondering who I am, I'm Andy Sterkowitz, I'm a self-taught programmer. I actually learned to code back in 2014, I landed my first job in 2015, and right now I'm actually mentoring and coaching everyday people who are looking to make the transition from their non-programming career into a programming career. So this channel is all about how to cultivate the skills, how to learn, and also how to get that first job. So I highly recommend hitting the subscribe button. Also as well, make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. All right, so can you still change careers and become a programmer after the age of 30? Is there some magical thing that happens after the, the age of 30 that prevents you or lowers your probability dramatically from actually getting that first job? The answer is no. The answer is no for many reasons. I'm not just being overly optimistic here or just trying to be positive or I'm not selling something. Like I really could care less about whether you decide you're gonna do this or not. But the truth of the matter is, is that there is so much demand for software developers and for web developers that it's sort of like the wild west. I've, I, like, I love saying that because it's just a crazy time to be alive. You can teach yourself to do this. You do not have to go to school to do this. You can get into the field and get a decent paying job and it doesn't matter about your age. Now let's be very, very clear about this before I even proceed with my argument here. Is there ageism, right? Is there age bias in the US where I live? Of course there's age bias. There's absolutely age bias. The society, like what we value as society is youth, is attractiveness, is wealth. Of course those things are true. But that's at a macro, at a high level. On a day-to-day, -day, on a micro level, there are many companies out there who are thirsty, like they are dying for software developers to come to their company and help them make more money, right? At the end of the day, all companies, all they wanna do is make money. And so they would love to hire a software developer who's 50 years old, who's 40 years old, but that software developer, the idea is they have to be able to produce as much value as they're being paid for. So if I'm gonna hire you as a software developer, say I pay you 50K starting out, $50,000 in the US dollars, you have to increase my bottom line by at least that much, at the very least. It's probably gonna be more like 1.5 times what you're bringing in. So if you, if I pay you 50,000, I want you to, to the bottom line of my company, bring at least $75,000 back or more. And so you have to be able to justify why a company could do that. And so like many of these smaller companies that you could potentially get hired at as a software developer or a web developer, they are a little bit nervous about pulling the trigger because if they hire you and your skills don't pan out, they've now sunk money into you and it just it makes them very conservative about that. So going back to the whole age thing, if there is a lot of demand here, if there are companies who are dying to hire you, then they're not gonna give two craps about whether you are 50 years old, 40 years old, or 30 years old, or 20 years old. In fact, that can even be an asset to you. Why? Because they want somebody who is potentially going to stay at their company for a decently long period of time. Software development, or the, the career of being a software developer, at least, you know, like seeing the, the landscape and seeing sort of just anecdotal stories from my friends, they're constantly moving around all the time, right? They're not really staying at their companies for very long. I tend to see people stay at their companies for about two years before they move on because they can get a better job title at their next company, they can get better pay at their next company. And on top of that too, there's usually something exciting that they can work on that they've already mastered at their previous company. So they wanna be challenged a bit more. So if a company sees that you're coming in and you've got a family, and you're taking care of them, it can be an asset to them because they know you're gonna stick around for longer than the two years. Maybe they're gonna be able to cultivate your skills as you work for them and you're gonna be a very valuable asset for a very long period of time. I think just looking at my previous employers who I have stayed in touch with, it is very frustrating for them to lose good talent because the good talent is not easy to find in this career. There's just so many, there's just such a large pool of applicants. So let me leave you off with one last thing here. If you are above 30, if you're above 40, or even if you're above 50 or even 60, there's one thing that you really have to be very careful 
mindful of, and that is your beliefs about this, right? In other words, do you believe that you can get into this because your beliefs will ultimately dictate your results, right? Like whatever external things you want, you first have to start with your internal beliefs. If you believe that this is a young man's game and that the only way you can get a job is in Silicon Valley and you gotta be 21 years old and have gone to Stanford and got a CS degree, then what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna lose all motivation to even make an attempt to do this because you're gonna say to yourself, why even try? Like why even try if this is for young people, if they're just gonna look at me and laugh at me because I'm 50 years old or 40 years old, then what's the worth? And so you need to be very careful about what beliefs you let in. So stop reading articles about, you know, kids are taking over, millennials are gonna make up X amount of the workforce and they're pushing out all these boomers or whatever it is. I don't pay attention to any of that because it doesn't have any effect on you on the individual level. What you should really focus on is cultivating the skills that are necessary, practicing as much as you can, building projects, creating a portfolio, creating an online presence that allows you to get interviews and allows you to eventually get a job. And by the way, if you're with me so far, but you're still a little bit hesitant because you feel that for you in your specific situation that you ha are not able to learn as much at your age, right? So people think that once they get in their late 30s, 40s and 50s, that your brain doesn't work like it once did, right? Like in your 20s, that was the peak. And then as you get older, things just go down slowly. I would highly recommend that you check out the book, The Brain That Changes Itself. I read this book and it completely changed the way I think about my brain, how it works, and especially as you get older, how your brain can still function at a high level. Um, the basic idea behind that book, by the way, is that your brain is very plastic, it's very malleable, and that you can change it to a very large degree no matter what your age is. And one of the things that he really focuses on in the book are stroke victims and how people who have suffered a stroke, which means that parts of their brain literally die off, they are still able to regain control of most of their motor functions and even their learning abilities still are high after the stroke. And I thought this was amazing because these are people who are in their 50s and 60s who are still able to do this. So for those of you who are in your 40s or 50s and you really feel that your just brain just doesn't quite work as it used to, what I would challenge you to do is to learn more, right? Try to learn new skills, learn programming, learn a new language, learn a musical instrument, and you'll find that your brain will pick things up over time and it will get better. They say whatever you don't use, you lose, right? That comes with muscle and that goes with your brain as well. And so if you've been not really challenging yourself the last couple of years, I highly recommend getting back into it. You will find that your brain is just as capable as it used to be, but you're not using those same parts because maybe your belief system has just caused you to think that, you know, it's too late for me, I can't do it. But once you switch over and you start challenging yourself, you'll find that your brain lights up and you get really excited about learning again. So with all that being said, I'm gonna make it very clear here. I don't think there's any limitations on you once you hit 30 years old. I don't think some magical thing happens where all some people just look at you different. And I think this can actually be an asset to many of you who are above 30 if you wanna make this career change. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, please go ahead and leave a like. You can also leave a comment below if you agreed or disagreed. By the way, if you are that person who is 100% committed to making this career change, so you wanna shift careers and become a programmer, I highly recommend checking out my paid mentorship program where you can work with me one-on-one -on -one to get your career started. Now, if you're interested in the program, what I recommend you do is book a free career strategy session. To book that session, you can actually go down to the description. I'll leave a link in the description below. During that call, what we're gonna do is I'm really gonna ask you a lot of questions and try to figure out what your biggest sticking points are. What are the issues that are holding you back? I'm also gonna work on figuring out the exact goals that you have. And from there, if the mentorship program is a good fit, I'll lay out what that looks like and we can go from there. So I highly recommend jumping on that call as soon as possible. Again, I will leave a link in the description below. Other than that, thank you so much as always for watching and 